hi hello thank you so much for being here i hope you're all safe and doing well welcome to a brand new j fashion mythbusters video this is kind of my series where we dive deep into various j fashion styles with people who are part of the global j fashion community so this is great for people who are brand new to these styles and want to get into it even those who are seasoned veterans so that they can learn a little bit more about them you can check out the rest of the series in the j fashion mythbusters playlist the style that we will be focusing on today is cult party k a japanese fashion with a focus on vintage clothing and sheer layers my wonderful guests are usa king indie alt idol vocalist musician melancholia and blogger artist stylist photographer avina k so the both of them have over two decades of experience with alternative street fashion and I am super duper excited to learn all about cult party k let's go ahead and jump right into the interview hello thank you both so much for joining me today if the both of you could give me a quick little introduction about yourself how you found out about j fashion and cult party k and you know kind of how long that you've been wearing it for so whoever would like to go first feel free to go right ahead avina's wearing the crown so i built them <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay i'll <laughs> I'll go first. My name is Avina. I go by Avina K on most platforms. I found out about J fashion when I was like in middle school. Like I distinctly remember I had one friend who was really into Megamoso and had shown me some of their like CDs. One member of Megamoso wore this like really cute, extremely feminine style. And I was like, what the heck is that? It's what I later learned was Alita. But I actually started wearing Decora. That was my first style. I wore that a lot. I wish I had photos. A lot of them have been lost, like my MySpace ether. And then that eventually grew into Lolita. And then that eventually grew into to like almost every other like style I can think of that was popular at some point in Japan I like dabbled in at least for a little bit to this day I kind of you know I'm borrowing like TikTok terms but I, I would kind of describe myself as like a sustainable maximalist my like main sources of inspiration are usually cult party k and dolly k because those were like the two fashions that were very formative for me and made me realize like oh I can like take these things I was already doing with Lolita and like amp it up even more so yeah so that was how many years ago that's almost two whole decades ago mm. <laughs> um <sighs> And I've been wearing it for like maybe like actively wearing it for like 17 years, I think is safe to say. So yeah, it's been it's been a while. <laughs> Melancholia, what about Hi. you? Welcome. <laughs> Hello. Hi, my name is Melancholia. How I found out about J Fashion, something that's been very prominent in my life since I was a kid has been idols from Japan. It has translated into so many different avenues in my life, obviously. But when I was really 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 young i got into idols through hello project they had lots of different members some of them who did like gyaru styles more so some of them who were like very very like cute over the top just very like 2000s type of style but through that i got into japanese music as kind of a whole at a really 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 young age so naturally the progression was okay from idols then i'm gonna get into visual k and then all the all this Japanese music has just been like my forte for a really long time. Uh, obviously, I was like six or something, so I couldn't naturally buy all these big brand things, but I did always really enjoy them. And my parents always uh, had a fascination for like things like Lolita and things like that after we went to like conventions and all of this way back in the early 2000s. So as a, as a collective, we've all had kind of an appreciation for it from what we saw from other people way back when. I think that the first styles that I ever dabbled with was Visual K actually. <laughs> I did mainly BK and Oshara K when I was, oh gosh, between the ages of like 10 to, to 13 or so. So I did that for some time. Then I swapped over to Lolita. It was all body line stuff. I was 13. I was, <laughs> I could, 13 years old in like the year 2010. So I really did the best I could. Now, primarily, I dabble in Mori K and Cult Party. Those are the two that I like the most. I've been wearing Mori K for about nine, eight or nine years. I wish I do it a lot more casually. I'm not like very like purist Mori, but I I've been very actively dressing in cult party pretty much every day for about four years now. I've always really enjoyed both of these fashions, but I didn't really know how accessible either of them were to me until mm -hmm. those times. So um, that's that's me. <laughs> 
Well, yes, we are going to be talking all about Cult Party K today. So the first question, well, no, that was the first question. Okay, the second question that I have for the both of you. So what exactly is Cult Party K? It's a very broad question. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it is It is a bit of a, a broad question. So Cult Party kind of started as just a store. I think, gosh, it, what was it, 2006? I think it started in 06. I, yeah. My dates might be a little wrong, but it was started by this girl named Ari, who she actually came to Tokyo to be a musician at that time. She was trying to pursue music, but music was expensive. So she had to get a part-time job and she got this part-time job at a fashion store. And I think it was in Koenji, which isn't what we know in the West as like a, a, a fashion capital of of Japan, but it was a, it's a very like retro, nostalgic, yeah. stylish type of city. So everything's like old and antique there. So she got a job there. She came to love clothes and just the store and selling clothes and meeting people through clothes more than she liked music in the end. So she wanted to start something similar to what she had before. And that's how she started the store called Cult Party, which is kind of an entire conglomeration of just like vintage clothes from, I think that the dates that she normally goes for or did at the time of this one article that I read about her was from like the 40s to the 80s was kind of like the time zone of clothes that she went through and a lot of it's very like airy flowy it just kind of like nostalgic dreamy type of clothes but in a kind of like an unsettling way <laughs> I guess I mean do you want to jump on any of this I feel like I'm monopolizing oh no you're fine the only thing I really want to add which you were probably going to get to got reformed and got turned into the Virgin Mary eventually mm -hmm. was the name of the store and it still exists to this day and I really love that it does because so many those the first folks who kind of forge away into like a new J fashion style you know evolve and change and they kind of move on and it's like a little sad and nostalgic like looking back on it and you kind of get like this weird feeling of FOMO like if you discover it too late like you're like oh like the heyday already passed mm -hmm. and I kind of love that like the Virgin Mary is still there and sort of a bastion to the style that yeah, might have hit like its peak pop popularity and I want to say like 2012, 2013. But I think it still endures. And I think what's also like really unique about it is that it is a style that you can kind of establish using pieces in your own wardrobe, especially if you're already drawn to the common color palettes in Cult Party K. You probably already have like things that would work for it. So I just I really love that aspect of it. Like it's not very brand focused, even though we talk about Ari and, you know, we talk about the original Cult Party K store and the Virgin Virgin Mary. Like it's not like you have to buy things from her store to fit mm. the aesthetic. That's really, really cool. And also like the interior decor in like her store is just incredible like so it's like beautiful. art installation status mm -hmm. it's just so good yeah <laughs> i guess it's like to to kind of blanket statement on like what cult party really is something that i've liked to say for me personally there isn't necessarily like a a right or wrong in turn like I, I mean like there is but like in terms of cult party it's like whenever you see photos of it you already kind of get an idea of what it is but then it's kind of like okay but what is it in your eyes like what is that's a that's a part of the fun with cult party is that you kind of get to take all these specific elements mm -hmm. that are like that because it's not like it's not like it's a style like decora where it's like you can kind of say like there's a very clear-cut like definition for decora or lolita whereas there's a there's a clear-cut kind of like this is this is what it is. It's but with Cult Party, it's kind of more like there's themes and aesthetics that are kind of put into it because it's it was just based off of a store, you know? Mm. It wasn't like a movement really. It was inspired because of this this one store. So it's a very unique type of fashion because it that was its birthplace, really. And that's what did start it. Whenever you describe it, you just kind of have to describe what the store had, <laughs> which mm. is just like antique laces, vintage nightgowns. There's some like shoujo themes kind of in there, but there is this overarching theme of what feminine innocence is, but kind of after people have already explored the world and seen the hardships of the world too. And that's kind of what she wanted to create cult part party as this kind of like tainted innocent but still wanting to come in contact with something beautiful type of feeling more so with cult parties it kind of feels like a vibe like even though everybody's doing like their own different interpretations and stuff there are some like similarities and stuff 
stuff, stuff. <laughs> but for a cult party K outfit, what are some of like the key elements in it? So, you know, when you look at a picture, you're like, okay, well, that's a cult party K outfit. I feel like, you know, initially, and especially this is true for how the West kind of took it and ran with it. It was a lot of like vintage nightgowns was like the like main like staple item. And I know I'm like totally wearing like a little like nightgown shrug myself so like that's like a really good way to like immediately bring that vibe into what you're wearing you just want to like stick to like very like floaty ethereal kind of feeling materials most people gravitate to peignoirs like that's like kind of the main thing for those who don't know what a peignoir is it's basically a vintage nightgown but it's like the covering for the vintage nightgown Mm -hmm. so if you see like those like really pretty robes with like the nice puffy sleeves they're almost always made with like a very sheer not nylon or polyester that's what a penoir is p-e-i-g-n-o-r um and they're wait n-o-i-r wait now i'm like <laughs> hold myself. on i'll type it in <laughs> yeah like i i i obviously would not win a spell yes like, hey, i-r it's okay, the i-r <laughs> i was like wait a minute penoir <laughs> it's a penoir so yeah so <laughs> So they were they were really popular in the West in the like 70s. I, I hate saying East West, like in the US. They were very popular in the US, the 60s and 70s, and they were like sold primarily by like Saks Fifth and similar retailers. Christian Dior made a lot of penoirs. Honestly, if you look up like 70s Saks Fifth nightgown, things will come up. Penoir is usually the main word that will like mm. pull up exactly what it is. That was like the main accessory that you really saw on a large chunk of the photos that went viral in the US, like on Tumblr and stuff like that. I do not think it is an actual staple for the style. Like if you know that fabric makes you uncomfortable, et cetera, et cetera. Like you don't have to wear a peignoir, but I always say that that's like a really good way to just kind of get used to like spotting someone who might be like emulating that style or influenced by it. It's very different from other fashions like Mori K or Dolly K because there is this focus on like very light and flowy and sheer fabrics with lots of like textures and layering unlike in Mori which is basically only natural fabrics Mm. and Dolly K which is like lots of like heavy brocade and like ornamentation a good place to start is to just nail down like what sorts of fabrics kind of evoke the vibe more yeah that was actually gonna be my next question regarding like Dolly K and Mori K I have like four different styles here Dolly K natural K Mori K and Larm. Isn't Mori K more so to do like forest? vibes yeah right? so mori is very much like how i'll just des- how i describe it to like outsider type of views is like i was explaining to someone not too long ago what the difference between yama k and mori k was and i was like okay mori k the fairy in the forest yama k the funky explorer who finds the fairy in the forest <laughs> i guess kind of in some not all but some of like the the cottage core things that you see which is very very popular in the US right now a lot of that what you see with that could also be hand in hand with Mori K. Of course, not all cottage court can be Mori K, but I think that most Mori K outfits, if you saw that, somebody could also very much be like, oh, so it's cottage core. But it's it's it doesn't really go both ways. But that's kind of like Mori. Think of it more of like the the forest gremlin. I, I, <laughs> I guess it's also very layered though, which is the thing with a lot of those styles, like Dolly and and Mori both. Like both of them are very like layer heavy, and there's a lot of different textures with those as well so it, i guess from an outsider point of view it is kind of hard to pick and choose like which one goes where with cult party there's a, a lot of times where actually cult party and on occasion some fairy chords can actually kind of crisscross in a way just because a lot of times in fairy k peignoirs are also used mm. in outfits and stuff too so sometimes people will do that and be like it's also it's cult party or it's a cult party chord and people will be like oh i love your fairy chord and i'm like wait um <laughs> so there, there can be some crossover there but i think that cult party has a big kind of grasp on like also having that kind of like vintage 
edge to it. Like even if it's not a vintage piece per se, it kind of has that retro feeling to it. Whereas Mori has that very like floral foresty feel to it. Whereas mm-hmm. Dolly has that, as Vino was saying, brocade kind of woven feel to it, very ornate more so. And Fairy has that more bright, colorful, patterned type of feeling. Once you just kind of familiarize yourself with the different styles and like really look through like pages and pages and pages mm-hmm. of it, it's easy. It becomes a little bit easier to differentiate between the different ones, but they all have some overlap in some sort of thing here and there. So it can get a little confusing at times for sure. It's also like especially rough because like Fairy K and Culperty K both have this aspect of like revisiting nostalgia Mm -hmm. and like things that like brought you joy when you were a child. Mm -hmm. But the way I like to differentiate it is like Fairy K is, you know, a well-preserved magical girl toy from the 90s mm. and call party k is like a well-loved teddy bear with like one eye falling out yeah <laughs> but that's kind of, you know so so you want to look a little bit more haphazard and slapdash in call party k and that like really hits the spot and i feel like that's like a very unique take when you compare it to cottage core as well where i do feel like cottage core kind of is bottling the essence and making it honestly commodifiable like mm. you, know, you can go there i think there's literally like a cottagecore.com where you can just buy clothes that just give out give the vibe they nail it like it looks yeah. really cute and it's like hit like this like i'm a girl who like owns a cottage and like a beautiful forest and like i've like run out into a glade with a basket to collect flowers like it gives that vibe but also also, it gives the vibe of like, and I, these clothes were like just made last week. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, I think Cole Party K and a lot of these other styles have this look of like, I've lived in this wardrobe or someone else has lived in this wardrobe and passed mm-hmm. it down to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's like this very homemade feeling to it that I just don't think is really quite there when you compare it to more recent resurgences mm-hmm. of like aesthetics and cores that are like really popular um, mm-hmm. in English speaking areas of the world. Yeah. My crown's falling off my head. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> And it's not necessarily that it's like a bad thing, mm. anything either. Like, we're not definitely not saying like these things are bad. Like, oh, I don't right. think yeah, that yeah. they are at all because I think that a lot of these things are kind of like a fun gateway mm. into people really getting to discover a lot of these fashions. Like, I follow, I follow the cult party K tag and the amount of times that I'll see just like some random like things that I, I personally wouldn't consider to be like cult party. But the, the, the thing is that the term is being kind of, thrown up into the air a little bit. So that means that there are more people kind of having a a look-see at it and more people that are, you know, growing a little bit interested somewhere in in it. And that's with the same with like Mori as well with people who are more into like cottage porn now, you know, it's like a, it's like a little like pipeline, you know, you got to start somewhere. But yeah, I think that, I think that with a lot of these, this little like bundle of J fashions that we're talking about right now, a lot of them just really do have this big hand on it being like used, vintage, thrifted, that, that kind of energy, which I think is fantastic. And I think that people are kind of leaning towards that kind of thing more so in these kind of like core aesthetics and stuff too nowadays, which is good to see. It is sucky for like a thrift culture as well. It, it's a mm. whole whole bag of worms. It is giving people leeway to kind of find Japanese fashion through all these like alternative fashions that are kind of getting it uh, like a high in the US right now. So I think that that's also like kind of cool because it, it will bring in people to these communities and these fashions that people outside of like our little circles would perceive as like dead fashions or anything like that. You know, mm. when would you say that cult party K was very active? Like, is there a community ongoing or? I wouldn't say that there's a community in the US really. Mm. There's a there's like a couple of us that do it and I think that all of us know each other. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's not like a we're all like so scattered you know mm. it's it's kind of and there's people who will do a cult party cord for an event or yeah. for a meetup or something but they don't really return to it after that that's not to say though that there isn't one in japan in fact i think that there probably mm. is although it's small and people don't really see it as often because i think that even the people like the people from the west who are over there right now they aren't really going to talk about that as much because there's so many other new cool like j fashion street styles that are coming up so it's like naturally they'll 
talk about these new wacky ones mm. that are coming out or this really cool one like Jedi is very popular now like people are going to talk about these newer styles that people are kind of seeing you know like I think there definitely is still a community for a cult party in Japan we just don't really have that bridgeway between mm. like communities or people in the US to people who do street fashion in Japan we don't have that crossover really so it's it's hard to say if there really is or isn't because I'm sure there is we just in english speaking countries don't really have that connection and here in the us there isn't really a community for it either but everyone's really friendly who does do it so <laughs> i'm seeing it like more often where like folks will realize that you know because they were already involved in like other j fashion styles they're like oh hey i kind of have like the ma- the machinations of a cult party k outfit let me like try that out so mm-hmm. It's been really fun because, like, most of my friends are basically, like, pretty strictly, like, Lolitas or Goths and, like, th- no no real, like, <laughs> leaving of those realms. But every once in a while, we'll hang out and they'll be like, oh, look, I, like, put together an outfit that's, like, kind of inspired by Cole Party K because, like, I saw you, like, your outfits and I'm like, oh, wait, I have the same thing but in like maybe a different color palette or I have something that's like very similar to it. So it's been really heartwarming because like a lot of my friends have been trying to give it a shot because they Mm. like, I don't think anyone can really look at Cole Party K and not like it. It's such a lovely, delicate, just beautiful little like time capsule. I think it's something that like most folks can relate to. And I think that's why I'm starting to see like a lot of people just, you know, like try it, dabble in it. And, you know, sort of like what Melancholia said, maybe wear it for like one event and just be like, cool, I I tried that out. I think that's just as valid. But because of, you know, that sort of aspect of it where I don't think a lot of folks kind of consider it their main style or Mm. they don't structure their wardrobe to only be a cult party K wardrobe. There isn't really a community or a subculture around it the way that you see with like Visual K or Lolita. Mm. And there's also no like, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's even like a music base to this, which I think helps kind of push like a subculture aspect to a style. If there's Mm. like a musician or a group of musicians or a genre that you band yeah. around there's like not really that aspect either mm-hmm. so it is fairly common to see people take different aspects of call party k and like really run with it but not really all kind of do it in the same sort of way because everyone kind of has different things that they like about it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it, i guess it's also hard because with cult party there's not really like you have stores and stuff and there's an occasional designer where you can buy their piece and use it in a cult party cord or or whatever whatever other kind of cord dolly cord or fairy cake cord but that's the thing it's like you can use that piece in a lot of different types of styles so there's not really cult party designers like there is like with a bunch of different lolita designers you know that that really makes it fun and exciting for people who do lolita because there's all these different types of dresses that they can get oh my gosh but with cult party it it, that's not really like a thing there's stores but these stores are just like curated from other thrift stores so it's in that regard it's kind of hard as well because then if you really break it down it's a very aesthetically coded resale store Mm -hmm. kind of going back to the key elements of a cult party k outfit two separate things i noticed that there's like a lot of whites you know soft whites like is it possible to create an outfit with like different colors and then the second one is um i tried looking a little bit into cult party k before we did the interview and it said something about like religious imagery in it and is that necessary or nor nor (laughs) (laughs) Imagery isn't really necessary. Mm. Even just having like white clothes isn't really necessary either. I think that you could wear a cold party with any color. That's the fun of it. You could do any color. Um, I think that more people gravitate towards wearing like the more pastel, pale, white types of colors, the very like faded, drained out type of colors. But at the same time, you could wear like an aggressively bright red and a bright pink together as long as you have like that type of like material and the fibers together. I think that cold party K isn't as strong 
structured as people in the West kind of made it out to be when it first kind of surfaced, which is a big thing about it because so many J fashions, they're like, there's rules and there's, there's things here. But I think that cult party really, there isn't as there's rules. Sure. But you can bend the rules with this one. It's not, it's not so incredibly strict where if you get one thing like off a little bit, like if you don't wear your blouse under your JSK, like what's going on? But it's not, it's not necessarily like that. You know, you can kind of do whatever religious motifs as well. Like that was never like really anything never like a oh you gotta do this some people did just because i i think that like i don't even really know i think that they're like eh, it's cool it's cute it's gold it matches or a lot of the crosses would be like really ornate and they'd have some like fun details to it so they would just like look good meshed into everything also with cult party you know the word cult also kind of leads way into kind mm. of like wow religion cult wow wow very like <laughs> midsummer um and then being rebranded into the virgin mary as well there was you know still some kind of like cross motifs but i think that really this was just because aesthetic of the store runners themselves when they just kind of put that in there so naturally people kind of also gravitated towards that if you put it in your store people are going to say oh cool uh, i like that too and then once those people start wearing it then other people start wearing it it's just kind of a chain reaction so they're not necessary do i still wear religious motifs in my clothes sometimes absolutely but <laughs> it's it's definitely not a necessary thing and sometimes religion makes people uncomfortable too so to participate in cult party you don't you don't need that if you still like the style you can definitely still do it without even touching this type of aesthetic we don't have to steal the catholic aesthetic no we can do our own <laughs> i definitely agree that like you know I, I feel like the whole thing with crosses kind of came from like the same spirit that was like yes pen noirs are required to like wear a call party k and it's mm. like no it's just probably the easiest way to just like evoke the look like i think a lot of people realize that especially red crosses were really popular and like medical adjacent themes. And I mean, this was like pre Manhattan. I don't want to go down the Manhattan rabbit hole right now, but like, it's, <laughs> like, it's, it's very pre, pre, pre all of that stuff. I really do think that people just really liked the contrast of like a red cross on like a mostly white outfit. And it wasn't like anything deeper than that. I also like really recommend checking out Virgin Mary's Instagram. And that's what I was like looking up so I don't say it incorrectly, but it's Virgin underscore Mary underscore Tokyo on Instagram. And like, that's like a really good example of like what's currently being curated in the store. And you see a lot of other colors for some reason, like again, I guess, cause folks really love their labels in English speaking countries. For a little while, people were pushing dark Cult Party K, which like, it's just Cult Party K with black. That's all it is. Like you don't need to turn it into something else. Cult Party K is already like niche 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 like you don't need to create another niche or like section of it but i've seen call party k worn with like black before it looks really lovely again it's just more of a focus on like texture and fabrics like it's black but it's always like a sheer material it's always like layered there's like cute lace like poking out maybe like some silkier materials too it really is just kind of a feelings fashion it's not so much a silhouette and like here are the five things you need to buy sort of fashion. I think Culperty K popularized like the puffy red eye makeup that mm -hmm. like kind of bled into other J fashion styles at the time. But it's not like a necessity, but I still like to do it sometimes because it does kind of give you like really cute, like sad doll look. It goes back to what I mentioned earlier where Culperty K gives off this vibe of like a well-loved toy or even like a neglected doll, I guess. I will also add that. That under eye makeup, was it called Igari? I feel like I remember when that happened. I honestly could not tell you. I've forgotten. The name has been lost to time in my brain. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a while back. That was like 2010s era. Oh yeah. It's been, it's been, it's, it's very interesting because it's been kind of really carried on throughout so many other fashions like mm -hmm. yummy kawaii also that was like a, a big part for yummy kawaii stuff too and, and there is it's just been used kind of in so much so much so it's very interesting to see how like this specific makeup style has kind of transcended everything yeah, <laughs> outlived <sure>. style <laughs> the little crybaby tear look yeah mm -hmm. it's it's interesting and you really see it in lar magazine a lot too we kind of touched on it a little bit like kind of how when i asked about the religious imagery and whether you have to just wear all white talking about like misconceptions or misinformation about cult party k are there any others that you have found after wearing it for so many years that you feel like people have about the style it's a very
very minor pet peeve, but it is something that ends up mucking up, you know, Google search results if you're trying to do an English language search for anything. I love Tokyo Fashion's photos, but a lot of times I'll just miss tag styles. And sometimes it's because the person that they interviewed will kind of say that they like like this range of styles, but then for some reason, like only the tag will like say one thing. So I see Culprit K called Dolly K a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, it's like pretty clear, like the person was saying that they bought most of their things from the Culprit store, like everything else about the style just like evokes more of a Culprit vibe, but then it'll just be like labeled Dolly K and will be in the metadata forever for that image. So like, I think my pet peeve is like the fact that a lot of these like frequently visited websites are sometimes like misnaming street snaps. It kind of like makes it really hard to just do like a Google search and figure out like what you're looking for without seeing the style get like associated with a bunch of other styles that might have happened concurrently with it. I feel like a lot of that too is because whenever people see cult party, as you had even said, like it kind of has the the emotions of a of a mistreated doll. You know, I think that a lot of people who just like don't know will automatically be like this one looks like the doll this has got to be the dolly one you know <laughs> where you know so i think that it's a lot of that as well so people mm -hmm. just like don't really know but honestly the the j fashion wiki is like a pretty good place to kind of just like get some bearings on like what style is which and things like that and kind of just see it. some good examples of things and alternative styles or styles that were popular around the same era you know it's whoever works on that props to them because they they do really well and it's a good place to kind of see some real differentiation between the styles and they do a good job of like kind of explaining this style is this because this and this one is this because this and they're not the same thing because <laughs> because for specifically cult party and dolly there is a lot of overlap and i personally never fully understood that just because for me in my eyes i guess because i've just known of them for so long and i've done cult party for so long for me personally i see some of them and i'm like well how could they possibly be the same thing <laughs> mm. but but i think that that's just because i'm so familiar with it so from an outsider point of view i guess like you really wouldn't be, but that is also like something that kind of would be a, a bit of a pet peeve as well. I think the other aspect too that gets like really frustrating about it is Dolly K isn't even really a thing um, mm -hmm. in Japan. The folks who kind of pioneered the look, the owners of Grimoire, another store that still exists but does not do nearly the same sort of thing in Japan, they never endorsed or really approved of Dolly K as like a name for the style. They were like, this is just Grimoire, the shop style. It, mm -hmm. it, it was more more grimoire K than anything else. But like, I think there was like a random interview or something with like someone on the street who kind of called it a dolly like fashion. And somehow that like kind of went from there, but they were using the term dolly the same way I was kind of using a doll as a descriptor earlier, like yeah. they were just saying it was doll like, but it wasn't like the name of the style. So like, I think that's Another compounding thing is that because essentially like we are all doing culprit K from like hearsay, you know, like we didn't get to experience like the culture in Japan in Koenji as it was happening. We had to like kind of take what we could get. It was like a little hard to fight misinformation. I feel like now because like all of these styles have sort of like cooled down and settled in many cases like are just straight up dead. Like I, I think it's safe to say Grimoire K is like gone because yeah. Grimoire the store itself basically turned into like a luxury resale store. Like, everything about like the vibe of it is like very sleek and based on like luxury. Although they still kind of curate more towards like jewel tones and textures, nothing else about Grimoire is the same anymore. The store's there, but it's not anywhere mm. near the same because we're kind of piecing everything together secondhand. There is a lot of misinformation and like crossover. But I, I'm kind of in the same boat as Melancholia. Like, I just don't see how they're conflated very easily. Like, sometimes you see, like, common accessories, like these sorts of Oddfellow collars are kind of worn in both styles. But, like, I think that was more because people thought they were cool and cute and they were very trendy. And I think a lot of the vintage stores were getting their hands on Oddfellow collars and selling them. I don't think it was anything much deeper than that. I guess it just boils down to, like, the fact that unlike a lot of other aesthetics or 
subculture styles because they're rooted in a subculture there's a bit of an intensity to engaging in them it's very much like being like a baby bat and the elder goths are like trying to teach you about like the cure because like you, you've got to know about it if you're also <laughs> going to be goth like there there isn't any of that in Cold Party K there isn't like oh you got to know about angelic pretty mm. you need to know about baby like there there isn't like this sort of indoctrination happening there isn't really that aspect to call Party K. So it can be really hard to sort of describe the aesthetic or like the vibe because like it is just a vibe. You're just trying to capture a vibe and it's a vibe that was at its peak in 2012. So it's a little hard to do. It's, it's kind of mm. like how Y2K style kind of came back but or like Mick Bling era style came back but like it doesn't feel like people are quite capturing like the actual ethos of that time because you can never go back to mm. 90s and the fear of the 2000s which was like part of being like in the Y2K fashion movement, <laughs> yeah. right? Like yeah. you can't like bring yourself back into that mindset. So I think similarly, it, it can be hard to kind of capture a cult party K because it is like this like snippet of like a very tiny part of time. I guess like I say all this to say like you don't need to take it that seriously. There's a lot of like options out there for you and it's okay if you like come away from this kind of being like, I still don't really get it though. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, it's like there's, I don't really think that there's a way to be like a cult party purist, I guess is what you're kind of saying. There's not like, you don't have to, it's a part of the fun of it. Like there's no one that's going to like make fun of you online for, for like, there's nobody who's like, your court isn't right. You know, there's not any of this like very strict ways how to do it. Everyone's just kind of excited to see anybody do the style in general. So like, we're excited. Or their, yeah, like I'm, I'm like jazz. I'm like, <laughs> I'll see people tag things as cult party Kate, which are like, not really, but I'm like, hey, no, I like it. Come on, Brie, let's keep let's keep it going. You know, it's just mm. because it's it's exciting to just see people have interest in 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 these styles because for literally so long in the West, people say that is dead. And I guess that that's kind of a misconception that is a bit of a pet peeve for me because it, it really it really isn't dead. It's just dead in the West. It's not it's it's not a dead style. The style, I guess, never really went anywhere. It just stopped being like super duper trendy. Um, mm. But it's the same as like J fashion stuff. Like we are not wearing trendy clothes. We're wearing niche alternative fashion. So nothing we are doing is necessarily trendy in the west if we were doing trendy things in the west it would we'd all look very different but very much like you know what i mean like we would be wearing the stuff that we see in magazines we'd all be wearing stuff that we see people who are really big stars on tiktok wear like we would all be wearing that we're all doing niche things anyways so it's like cult party is just that it's just another niche style and just because mm -hmm. we don't see as many people wearing it it doesn't mean that it's a dead style in the US, in Japan, anywhere. It's a style. It's a it's a it's an aesthetic. Anyone can explore it at any time. It's not going anywhere. It's it's already been established. It's already here on the table. Anyone can take that from the table and put it into their closet or try it out, you know? I don't know. That's something that kind of bugs me sometimes is when I, I'll wear cult party stuff at events that I go to on like my days where I'm not working and they're like, oh my God, I never see cult party anymore. And it's like, it's true. No one really does it anymore, but it also is like, so I, I used to dabble in like Sweet Lolita and things like that, but I, just because I don't do it anymore doesn't mean that it's not a big thing in somebody else's life or just because I don't participate in that anymore doesn't mean that it's not something that somebody it, or a big community has altogether you know just because it's not a part of my life doesn't mean that it's necessarily dead or gone or away or whatever it is because there's still people out there that kind of enjoy it too and although we're not a ton it's definitely still something that's there and that people enjoy so mm -hmm. i don't know i guess that that's a little pet peeve of mine <laughs> there's dozens of us dozens <laughs> yeah dozens <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what I'm hoping with this video, because when you think of like Harajuku fashion, J fashion, you think like Lolita, Decora, you know, there's like a bunch of people who do wear those styles. So I'm hoping that by having this conversation, especially more of the younger people that are getting into J fashion, mm -hmm. they will you know, yeah, they'll know that there's all sorts of different styles that they can try and Cult Party K is definitely one of them. So for those who are wanting to get into Cult Party K, like how should they get started? Like, do you have any advice for those who are completely brand new to it? So if you live 
in the US and Europe, I super recommend checking out like a local vintage store or vintage market and just looking through their nightgowns. Like that's like usually a really, really good way to start. And I'm not saying like, you know, go home with like everything that they have, but just get like a feel for like the sort of textures, the elements and the cuts and silhouettes that like seem to be common among all of them. If you don't have access to a vintage store, pull up Etsy and just look up vintage, you know, 60s, 70s nightgown. Go through the search results and just get like really familiar with like the sort of gauzy material you're kind of looking for. I also recommend checking out the tags on social media. Melancholia has touched on the fact that sometimes it's not super accurate, but you do find a lot of good stuff and you do start to see like where all of the commonality lies there's also plenty of old street snaps that you can pull up if you do a google search for cult party k and if you use the j fashion wiki they usually put it in katakana too so if you don't have any japanese literacy you can copy and paste the katakana into a search engine and i think google will automatically say like do you want english or japanese results filter it to japanese results and see what's there as well and just kind of expose yourself as much as it as possible it's rough because like you know there was never like a primary cult party like publication or anything like that but you will start to kind of like piece together what the aesthetic is and like what the vibe is and from there you can kind of figure out like what are the things I personally like about it what are things I might already have in my wardrobe or in my like parents wardrobe that I could like maybe refashion and like reuse there's just so much out there like when I first started already had like a handful of things because I just generally already liked cream and white colors. So I was naturally gravitating to Cold Party K anyways, because I already liked those colors. My main point of advice is like, don't feel the need to like completely go out of your comfort zone and be like, well, I've never worn white before in my life. Guess I need to get like an all white wardrobe now because I really like the style. Ease your way into it. And I encourage you to, because that's probably how you are going to like eventually like kind of nail the style because you're like slowly figuring out what works. Unfortunately, it's not going to be cultpartyk.com, buy everything off of it and you've got yourself a cultparty K wardrobe. It's it's not like cottage core. That's it's just not going to happen that way. I think that's just kind of like my main advice is like patience and like being very deliberate with what you're doing. And you know, if you have like a friend or a family member whose wardrobe kind of fits the bill, see if they're willing to like let you borrow some stuff to like just try on. I'll piggyback off of that. I think that cult party is literally something that anyone can do and anyone can wear, which I think is a part of the fun about it. You know, it's you don't need a lot of money to do it, which I, I know is like a big thing with a lot of people who want to get into like J fashions. And it's something that is kind of similar to like decor and stuff too. While there are like decor brands, you can easily pop into a Claire's and grab a bunch of hair accessories and mm-hmm. grab some like those silly like striped arm sleeves and you're good to go. You have like a good start of, mm. of something there and you can just pop over to the, your mall and do that. So I think that that's something that's really cool about like styles like Decora and styles like Quilt Party because anyone can do it. You don't have to get a shopping service to, to mail you over some things. You don't have to save up all this money to get this dress that you don't even know if it'll fit you or not. You don't know if it's going to have shearing or not. So like you're nervous. You just drop $200 on it. Like fingers crossed. There's not as much like risk involved and it's something that's really easy to just kind of dip your toes into i've thrifted a hundred percent of my wardrobe i have an entire closet full of nothing but peignoirs and bed jackets and little silk vests and uh, bloomers and all of this stuff and i've just thrifted all of this basically but the thing is is is, as avina was saying it it is some diligence like i go to thrift stores three times a week (laughs) All of them within like the 15 mile radius. I hit them up in one big sweep. I grab some pieces that I like, um, some blouses that I like. If you enjoy thrifting already or you want to get into thrifting, it's a it's a good style to kind of start with because chances are grandma just donated all of her (laughs) nightgowns from when she was like 12 and she doesn't need these anymore. Of course, like a lot of the times you'll just find like scrubs and (laughs) other like random like, oh my gosh, what was that buddy? Happy bunny? A crazy bunny? The the silly bunny. You know the one. That guy. You'll find like some pajama pants with him on it. Sometimes you'll find some really cute stuff and it's a really great 
basis. That's that's how I got started in Cult Party. I saw this really, really gorgeous blue peignoir while thrifting one day, and I was like, oh my god, I am obsessed with this. I'm obsessed with this. This would be so good for a Cult Party court. Like, four years later, it's all I wear. <laughs> it's just kind of like, give it a shot. You'll probably be really comfortable in it, and if you're not, like, you tried it out, which mm. you can you can go to a thrift store with $20 in your pocket and walk out with material for three different cords, vintage shops, antique shops. A lot of the times there's big antique malls. Surely one or two of the stalls are just going to have nothing but like vintage clothes. You can find some old nightgowns, old, just old clothes in general there that you can really either just wear it as is, or you can fix it up yourself. A lot of cult parties also like, there's a, a big like handmade atmosphere to it as well handmade stuff is like awesome so get crafty with it if you see some fabric that you like at a thrift store that you think would work cute with it an old baby blanket like turn that into something cute if you're crafty at all there's just there's so many possibilities with cult party and it's really accessible in the US and in, in, in Europe even, because that's what they did originally with the cult party store. They came over here to California and went on a big flea market hunt, a big thrift store hunt, all these types of things, bought a bunch of pieces, would bring them back to the West or not, not to the West and bring them back to Japan. And mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that that's what they still do. They still get shipments over just from stores and other places over here in the U.S. And they'll come travel here to different states and go to Europe to different places and just kind of peruse through all the wares that they have. So we're kind of lucky over here because we already have all the pieces here that they're sourcing from, you know, you just kind of have to have the drive to go literally to go to a bunch of thrift stores by you. If you're in a big, bigger city, it's it's a little harder sometimes to find some pieces because a lot of the times people will take those pieces immediately and upsell them or put them in antique stores for a lot of the times the antique store prices are going to be a lot more expensive than thrift store prices. Even still, you can find some good ones. I'd say if you're in a big city, travel 30 minutes north to your next small city, your next random tiny, tiny place, hit up the Goodwill there, and you'll probably find a lot more things that kind of stand out to you. Every single Goodwill is going to have something different. Every thrift store is going to have something different. Every antique store is going to have something different. And that's the fun of going to them so often and trying to really curate a wardrobe that speaks to you. When I first started, I bought everything. Ivina was saying, you don't have to buy everything, but I did. I did because I was just so excited. I've definitely sifted through that now and given out pieces to people that want to, you know, explore the fashion a bit more now. But when I first started, I did buy everything that I thought looked cuter that I could possibly do something with because I was just excited about it. I, you know, part-time job. And I was like, what can I do with this? I can't spend my entire paycheck on this OG cord that I want so epically bad, but I can spend one eighth of the paycheck and get this absolutely baller cult party cord, you know? So that's, it's just, it's really accessible. It's sustainable. It's, there's a lot of, a lot of good with the style. And I think that's just a lot of people, if they give it a shot, they'd really enjoy wearing it. It it just Mm -hmm. makes me feel good. I, that's personally, but I think that it's really cool and just awesome that we can do it so easily just from leaving our house for a little while and just shopping around. I also will add that I think there is a fear when you look at a lot of like street snaps and stuff of folks who are like mid-size or plus size might get like a little worried. I'm mid-size by American standards, plus size by Japanese standards. I will say that like the beauty of Culperty is that like you can find a lot of stuff and a wide variety of sizes. Usually like a lot of the things that are purchased by Virgin Mary are supposed to be oversized like clearly they're finding things that like do fit larger sizes so do not be discouraged like I just recently like you can't really see it because I'm wearing this like thing over it but just recently I found this really cute camisole in a tiny Atlanta vintage store for five bucks and it fits me and I'm probably like an XL in the US so you can just find a lot that works for you. It it does just take patience. The only thing I don't recommend against is just going ham on Etsy because a lot of times people are like really overpricing their things on there. It's just a good place to get used to like the search terms because if you plug those search terms into like Depop or eBay, you can sometimes find things for a lot cheaper. For some reason, there's like a handful 
of Singaporean Depop sellers that all have gorgeous, gorgeous, like Christian Dior and like really nice, like Saks Fifth nightgowns for like 10 bucks. Whereas like, <laughs> mm. in the US, like on Etsy, that stuff gets sold for like 200. Yeah. So like, if you're willing to just be patient and wait for like something to get shipped to you from Singapore, you can find a lot of like really nice stuff on Depop too. You just need to like, you know, change the filter to mm. allow for like international stuff. But I've like, purchased from like a couple of like those like depop sellers before because they had things that were in my size because it is a little bit harder to find things that are larger but like it's definitely not impossible honestly culprity case for everyone it is like so affordable it's so easy to get into it doesn't have a lifestyle aspect it doesn't have a subculture aspect i'm not going to tell you to listen to morrissey like there's nothing like so <laughs> it's for it's for everyone so i think culperty like encompassed like the sort of excitement that i had when i first got into decora too because i was just like wow like i can find these things you know like scrounging around bargain bins and like i can put together this outfit that like really really works i will say like and i'm sure uh, melancholia can also attest to this but like I mean, I've also been like thrifting and vintage shopping for like over a decade now and it never changes. Like I've never at one point felt like, oh man, like I think penoirs are like really in vogue and I'm not finding anything or like, but like old bed jackets are like out of style now and like no one's stocking them. Like there's almost always like a little section, like a little cozy corner that is just like things that you wear in your home in the 60s and you it can so like, is a cozy corner it's yes, so is, it's right. always a little <laughs> tiny cozy little nook and you will find something you know just like don't don't be afraid to ask questions i like you can't haggle at goodwills but if it's a small business i'm absolutely a haggler i would i will be like hey i'm buying five things give me a deal and they'll almost always like cut you one <laughs> like they're like who's gonna buy grandma's old nightgowns You're so me right. I am, but like, <laughs> you get a deal. Like, I, I, I love, and like, honestly, a lot of times too, they, like, if you're, if that like freaks you out, like, like initiating haggling, a lot of times, like, they'll just be like, wow, you're buying like a lot of things that I haven't been able to move. Like, here, I'm going to cut dollars <laughs> off. Like, <laughs> just fill the bag up for $5. Just, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're just like, yeah, whatever. Like, there, there, there's been times where like, I'll go vintage shopping and they'll be like, I didn't even know I had this in the store. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be like, yeah, it was back there. Honestly, I think that's like why my heart keeps getting like stolen by Cole Party K like every, every few weeks. The fashion never died for me. It just took a nap at some points in my life where like, you know, I just didn't have the time to dress up like that. Or I, I work like a very like stringent white collar job. So you know, I can't really wear anything very alternative to the workplace. So there's been times where like, you know, I've got to hang up my little teddy bear purse and it makes me sad. But like, I I just, there's just so much you can do with it. It's never too late. There is like really no shortage of these things. Definitely look up how to launder delicate clothing because you don't want to wear things, like never wear something from a thrift store without washing it first. There's a lot of people who who will? And I'm like, please don't do that. Look up how to launder clothing. Like <laughs> tip number two. I think it's just a really, really lovely style because there, there really are no limits. No one is really like the culprit K police. If you're very confused about if something works, like please, like I, I, my DMs are always open. Like you're welcome to like ask me questions. I love like helping people put together outfits too. If that's like something you just need to like figure out, like I, I'm well, like I'm down to talk about that as well. Um, within reason, of course, because I, I I don't want to do your homework for you. You know, like eventually <laughs> you do kind of have to figure out how this works for yourself. But I just, I really love the style and it makes me really happy that I'm starting to see more people talk about it mm. because like, even today, I just saw a new video go up about Capriti K and oh. I was just like, oh, <laughs> like, so it was really <laughs> exciting. Granted, it was a good friend of mine who I'm subscribed to and she was, she was basically putting together Culperty K outfits from her own wardrobe oh. and just kind of walking through it. I was just like, oh, wow. Like she, she was someone who I know knew of the style, but like, it was just nice to see her like sit down and kind of like put together outfits and clearly it was something that was she was doing because she was prompted by someone who followed her hopefully we might see like a little resurgence because like you know even decora was considered a dead style for a really long time. so 
like who knows may- maybe with like 2014 tumblr girl era we'll also get back <gasps> yeah. you know? <laughs> that'd be like really nice yeah yeah i just hope that if that does happen you know i uh, i don't want to see no police around here mm-hmm. i just i just hope that everyone just kind of has fun with it and kind of sees this as the style where you just like kind of can have fun you take that ethos of what cult party you know, was trying to capture for so long, you know, just that, that kind of overall vibe and just kind of, kind of run with that. I, I hope that, that that's something that kind of stays as a constant because I have also seen more people kind of gravitate towards it a little bit. And I just hope that uh, it kind of stays on this, like, very, just like, just go for it <laughs> type of type of wave because I, I think that it's important to have those kind of more freeform street styles that people can kind of experiment with more so a last quick little comment I do I do think like we're really primed to maybe enjoy it more than we did the first time it kind of surged in popularity in English speaking communities because like you know back then there was a rigidity it was in like the height of the minimalism movement it was clashing a lot with like more mainstream ideas and I think now we're like really used to this idea of like aesthetics with like nothing else but the aesthetic really holding holding it together people like mixing and matching their wardrobes like someone will look really punk one day and then look like really like pastel goth the, the next there's like a maximalism boom going on so like i i think that like maybe this time around if like we revisit cult party k it might click in more people's minds than it did the first time mm. because we've already familiar familiarized ourselves with like these aspects of the like culture surrounding its birth and then now we can embrace it too because like we're like oh okay I get it I get it now I wholeheartedly agree with the both of you for me like I didn't really know too much about cult party k I just knew like bits and pieces from a little bit of research that I did but I really I learned a lot today and I really hope that a lot more people start wearing the style. I watched your Bay Area K panel about like cult party and like Mm. the various other styles. Yes, for those watching, I highly recommend that. There's a video on the Bay Area K YouTube channel with these two lovely folks talking more in depth about cult party and the various styles that we talked about today. But it's very exciting. The future of J Fashion. Before we skedaddle, do the both of you have any last words or things to promote? I'm taking a bit of a break from the internet, but I do have my Instagram and I do respond to DMs still. I'm not like scrolling through my feeds or anything like that. My Instagram is underscore Avina, A-V-I-N-A underscore. I also have a Kofi account. It's just co-v.com slash Avina where I blog and the blog is free. It's on coffee just because it makes it easier for folks to tip me if they like it. You're welcome to check me out in those two spaces. They're a bit quiet at the moment, but I do respond respond when people message me so like don't don't feel like I'm like not online ever anymore I recently dropped my second EP titled in my sunset it's available for streaming anywhere and you can also buy a physical copy of it so if you're interested in kind of j-rock music please please consider checking me out it's more of like a shoegaze edge but there's some other types of styles on it so if you're interested in in, uh, j-rock music as well please consider checking me out i had some awesome producers working on it i'm really excited about it and i hope that everyone can give it a listen please support these two lovely people thank you both again so much for talking to me about this it was a lot of fun so i appreciate you both (laughs) so much thank Thank you you for having us All right, so I hope that this was helpful for anyone who is brand new to learning about Cult Party K or just interested in learning more about it. I have both of Melancholia and Venus links down in the description. If there's a style that you would like for me to cover, please feel free to leave it down in the comments below and I'll try my best to make it happen for you. But thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you to my lovely patrons. Thank you for your support. Thank you, thank you again, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye!